Hello, my name's Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV. Today's show is Papa's World. Each week we bring a different author in, and hopefully I don't knock their books down like they already started out there. And we have a chance to find out who they are, how they perhaps got into writing, but more importantly, we get to discuss all their books, or as many as we can, and tell you how you can get these wonderful books that they've written. I'm delighted to have Karen Whiting with me today. Karen, thank you for coming in. Now, the toughest thing, challenge we have today, right, is not the interview, if my gestures will keep the book standing, all <laughs> We right? could move this a little no, further yeah, okay. away. <laughs> for your safety, all right? <laughs> Karen, help me out. How about let's start, and first of all, thank you for coming out on a beautiful spring day. Tell me where you grew up and where you're from, and then we're just going to run through a little bio here. I grew up in Connecticut in okay. a small farming community that primarily consisted of my relatives. <laughs> Okay. It grew a lot by the time I went off to college, but when I was a young girl, there were probably 2,000 people in town, and about 500 were related to me. So a nice little small town, but you couldn't do anything wrong because the <laughs> eyes, were, eyes were on oh, you. Oh, but I was so loved. <laughs> okay, which is good. Uh, mom and dad, profession, teachers, doctors, My lawyers. mother was a nurse. My father was an engineer. He was a nuclear engineer oh, back right. in the 1950s oh, even. Oh, wow. He was on the early curve of nuclear engineering stuff. He was. Admiral Rickover even named him as one of the top three gamma ray experts in this country it, back in the 70s. Well, terrific. So, now, siblings? <laughs> two brothers, an older one, a younger one. The okay. older one is a nuclear engineer. All right. So that stayed in that part of the family. It did. Now, how about school? Were you a uh, sports person, theater, drama, always had books in your hand growing oh, wow. up? I always did crafts, did a lot of sports, okay. uh, majored in mathematics because okay. I really liked math. Okay, when you went to college? Yes, okay. mm -hmm. I did. Well, but even from third grade on, everyone knew you me always as liked a math. math person. Mm -hmm. And that was that from dad being the nuclear engineer? Or well, his degree was math, so that probably okay. did a lot okay. to do with it. But my mother had two aunts who uh, taught math in All high right. school. So you, you, so there was a lot of you math. You were going to be a math person in the DNA, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I think so. Uh, high school years, uh, again, uh, book, I mean, I always ask the authors, were you always reading, were you always writing, or is this something that came later? I always read. I never wanted to write. In okay. fact, in college, I took one English course, and I checked around to make sure it was the one that had the shortest papers. <laughs> okay. And that was funny. My teacher didn't give me the right answer. When I said to him, I need help, after I wrote my first paper, he says, well, you got an A. That was the best paper I've seen all semester, probably in the last few years. Sure. I said, but it took me 20 hours, and it was only two pages, <laughs> two and a half pages. 20 and so, hours. 20, right. uh, he said, and so he was telling me little shortcuts to try to make it faster, sure. which brought it down to 15. That's the best <laughs> I could get. What he didn't realize and didn't tell me is that was the mark of a real writer because I was a perfectionist, and I could write and edit so well, and I okay. was redoing it until it was correct. 20 hours for a two-page paper. I'm I know. When I started writing, I thought, it'll take me a lifetime to do one book, but <laughs> obviously I sped up. Now, where was your undergraduate education? It was in Connecticut. I mean, at, at Connecticut school? College. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. And you're a math major. Yes. Thinking you're going to be, what, a math teacher? Or what? No, I didn't take any education courses. Okay. I wanted to work in industry. And okay. I did. When I graduated, I was a computer systems analyst in math modeling. Okay. And my field was stochastic processes, which few people now Tell me know. what that is. Yeah, I, that, the easiest way to put it is it's the calculus level of statistics and probability. Okay. All right. So you're a stat person. You're a numbers person. forecasting right? what's going to happen in production control and everything. Oh, very good. So you're predicting what a company will do in the future in terms of... Inventor, what yeah, to okay. order and right. uh, what to produce and things. And at yes. this point, no writing at all. No, mm -mm. no writing. Okay. No, no, I avoided that. <laughs> all right. So you you graduate from college. You're in industry. You're doing some pretty neat stuff with data and numbers. All right. Mm. How about marriage or travel? What's going on? Yes, I married someone in the Coast Guard. Okay. Jim uh, was a career Coast Guard. He went to the Coast Guard Academy. In fact, I met him when he was in his last year, and I was a junior in college. And the Coast Guard Academy is New London, Connecticut. Yes, so you it went is. that far apart. Across right? the street from oh. one another. Okay. And about his first ship was an icebreaker. He was gone several months mm. while I was finishing okay. up college. So we got married and had five children and okay, moved all over. We yeah. lived in Michigan, Hawaii, New York, Florida. <laughs> so you were a military wife? Yes. Uh, no, it would, well, five, um, look, full-time job raising one kid, five, I can't imagine. 
<laughs> yeah, were you working and raising kids and being, I don't know. Oh, it depended. Most of the time I did not work. There were times I would work at the Y teaching crafts and things. Times that I worked for H&R Block doing taxes because I, I had the math background. Yeah, okay. I'm going to say, sorry for interrupting. My wife and I had three kids. I don't know how we did that. Five and the traveling. Okay, so you were busy. You were busy. Yes. Okay. And again, while the kids are growing up, writing at all or not yet? Well, I did start doing some things about writing. I had... At one time when I was praying, I really felt God calling me to writing, and people then started telling me I should write because okay. of all the great things I did with my children. I thought, well, I'm trying not yeah. to. And when my just before my oldest started college and my youngest started preschool, because there were some years between the oldest and youngest with the three in between, I went to a retreat, and I was praying, and God actually gave me a vision and basically told me I was going to be a writer, not just write one book. And that's what kicked the whole well, thing Well, no, no. the next morning I go to breakfast, and I was like, where do I sit? Where do I sit? I finally said, I should sit here. And I didn't know it, but afterwards we were told to turn over our placemats. We all had paintings. My painting was of my vision. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm not. <laughs> so <laughs> that's hanging in my office. So you, you have this. You're inspired okay, mm -hmm. by your religious beliefs, obviously. Right. And does that mean you went right back to, uh, I guess, at those days, uh, were, you on we were you on computers yet or were typewriters? We were on computers. Okay. You know, being a computer systems analyst, I, as soon as they started coming out, we started having them. Okay. And at one point, my husband taught at the Coast Guard Academy, and he was able to get the Apple for the teacher and other right. computer software and things. So you come back from the retreat. Let me continue with that story. You're inspired. Yes. Okay. Uh, write to the writing something or no? I did. I started oh, okay. writing. And at the same time, my daughter, who's a senior in high school, has uh, is friends with a young man who had moved there his middle of his senior year. And I thought, oh, how hard to move your middle of sure, your senior tough. year. Okay. I thought, let me have the family over to dinner because okay. they may not know many people. Yeah. Turned out she wrote Christian books and murder mysteries. No, the, the, the wife of the... The mother of this oh, young okay, man. Okay. And she became my mentor as I started writing. Yeah. So <laughs> things were just fitting in. <laughs> yes. And then, at, well, because if God calls, he provides. So okay. and he equips. And a few months after I started, I went to a writer's conference for... Uh, met some editors who said, oh, send me some things. And I sent some little things, devotions and stuff, which they published. Picked up some magazines that taught about how it, what they needed for other magazines. Right, Started right. writing for them. About a year later, I got a call from Simon & Schuster asking me to do a book. <laughs> Simon & Schuster, you, you went right to the big leagues. <laughs> well, it happened that this little magazine I was doing Sunday School materials for, they produced it. Okay. They now, well, it. Let me ask, all these early writings, uh, religious uh, in nature? or Most of them were, okay. but some were just puppet scripts and things. So, okay. Because at the same time, I'm in Florida at this point, I'm directing a very large puppet ministry at church, and as I start writing, I just am also teaching at puppet festivals. Okay. And really, once that first book for Simon & Schuster came out, I had shown another book. In fact, if you pick up the Finger Puppet this book. This one right here? No, the one laying down. Right right puppetry? No. Oh, right in front. Okay. Right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I know. I have two. It says books. Finger Puppet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. So I showed this to a publisher, and they decided that they wanted to produce it. Before it was even out, I ended up being the host of a television series called Puppets on Parade so in Miami. Let me get this straight. You're raising five <laughs> kids. You're traveling around the country. You're a mathematician. Uh, you're writing books, and you have, you're running puppet shows. And, and I'm directing a puppet you're ministry. Puppet shows. Okay. And our puppet ministry is winning awards at festivals and okay. things, and I'm helping to teach at the festivals. So at that time, I thought, well, the younger children, they just couldn't hold up the large puppets. And I had studied puppetry years before this right. at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Institute of Puppetry. One of my teachers, Margot Rose, she and her husband Rufus had manipulated and uh, made, created Howdy Doody. The Howdy Doody show that I grew up with. Yes, that I grew up with too. With, with Buffalo uh, Bob. He, yes. Well, Chief Thunderfoot or something. Yes, so anyway, that's um, 
was my first teacher in puppetry, so now I'm teaching puppetry. Hmm. You learned from kind of the masters of early TV? I did, because then they taught Jim Henson and other okay. people, okay. who also came up and taught at different times at the festival. So my, uh, and then I started to learn how to make the puppets under one of the people who made Miss Piggy actually, and other things. Actually make the finger puppets. The large puppets. Okay, the large the puppets. Large okay. puppets. Okay. So the younger children just weren't strong enough to hold a puppet sure, sure. that heavy for 15 minutes, and I used high school students and some middle school who would do the prop, so I designed a finger puppet that had a movable mouth. Okay. <laughs> Who was it? Ollie the alligator, and, and uh, how do you do? Wasn't there an Ollie? That sounds right. Okay. Ollie is is a puppet. So this this is actually this a little like frog. A mini yes. Yeah, okay. So. Anyway, I designed this and showed that to the publisher who decided that would be make a great book, and they published that. But before it came out, mm -hmm. I needed a cover for the show I was hosting sure, to be able sure. to hold up what I did. Right, right. So they quickly had me mail them some puppets. You'll see that one is on the cover, in okay. fact, with larger eyes on that particular one. and. They made that mock-up really fast, chose the name I had given the book, A Finger Puppet Mania, and I had it up on TV. When you do a mock-up, you would take that cover and put right. it on top of a different book. Okay. Just so it looks like uh, it's just a book. Just so it yeah. looks like a real okay. book. And I held that up before it even released. <laughs> okay. There's no, now, let me go back in. What uh, puppets, puppetry, what was the push there? Your kids? I mean, what? And, I mean, yes. all of a sudden... Uh, no, my older daughter was in Girl Scouts. I mean, did mom and dad or brothers and sisters <laughs> with puppets or anything? You know? No, okay. no. So where did this come from? My older daughter, for her project for Girl Scouts, okay. decided that she wanted to start a puppet ministry at our church because okay. she had gone on a teen mission trip where they used puppets. And saw something that's pretty neat, yeah. And thought that was fun. So she starts the puppet ministry with my help. Okay. Then she goes off to college, leaving me holding the puppets, literally. <laughs> <laughs> you had the puppet ministry, and then, so it kind of came from your daughter getting involved with a little my bit. My oldest, and, and you then... You being a good mom helped out. Yes, and then f three of my other children did puppetry with Continue us also. With One of them instead stayed home and watched the youngest while okay. we did puppets. Right. <laughs> now, how about the actual making of them? Is that the original ones? Was it done on sewing machines? I mean, how did you... Well, some were sewing machines, but you really, underneath those puppets, there's foam, and you okay. carve the foam okay. to give them their shape. Give it the shape you want it. Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I only kept a few of the puppets when I moved up here. I kept a camel puppet I made because the camel was my college mascot. Now, look, I want to follow up on the bomb you <laughs> dropped on it. Well, I mean, how did Simon & Schuster just call you? Did you? There was no way. You got a phone call, hey, I'm representing Simon & Schuster, one of the biggest publishing companies in the world. <laughs> how did, I mean, explain that. Well, Most I of us don't get phone calls like that. <laughs> I was writing for a magazine called Shining Star, and the editor of magazine. Yeah, Shining Star. Shining Star was a Sunday school take home, okay. but Simon and Schuster published it. Okay. Right, okay, so Mary Tucker, the editor, was also in charge of the division of the religious education that Simon okay. and Schuster did, and she needed another author and liked what I was doing all the time, so she called and asked if I would do a book on the Beatitudes okay. for kids, a book all of right. activities and puzzles and fun. And, and she's I seen said your yes. work in the magazine, so it got to fit in. Yes, so right. she just called and asked me to do that. Well, that's pretty amazing. Like you said, <laughs> most authors that I've interviewed <laughs> yeah. and don't well, get Simon Schuster on the phone. No, yeah. the interesting thing is that was then sold, that division was sold to Francis Schaefer and then sold to McGraw Hill, and each time it was reproduced and republished. Okay. So the final version was done under McGraw Hill. Right. So I also Another <laughs> big leaguer. You weren't, you weren't doing that. Right. Okay, so this, now let me make sure I have the, uh, get this correct. This is the first. That's the second book. Oh, that's the second one. The okay. first one was one by Simon and Schuster, okay, that was, right. which okay. I didn't even bring. So yeah. you're into puppets, and um, all the writing comes because you were inspired on a retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, again, going back yes. to your religious beliefs, you got this message to do it. You run into a wonderful mentor who just <laughs> happens to be a mother of a friend. This thing is And a minister's off. wife. Yeah, okay, and a minister's <laughs> wife. I'm afraid to ask where we go from here. The land of Oz is around the corner. So, all right, so this could... Now, in the meantime... Your husband is still in the Coast Guard? Yes. Okay. So, And you're still raising kids? Yes. So this is, you're, you're juggling this. Okay. Right. So where do we go from here? Yeah. Well, he did retire a okay. few years after I started writing. Right. And then he started working for Rolls-Royce Naval Marine because okay. uh, he designed shipyards around mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. at that point. 
And we stayed in Florida until they decided to close that division and move it to Annapolis. So okay. then they moved us up here. So that's here. how you got up here? That's how I came up here in 2005. Okay, all right. So uh, the husband gets a job transfer, <laughs> moves to Annapolis. Kids are grown at that point? Or Just growing? one remained with us. He was in high school, but he quickly... Penn Island High School? Or? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah well, he went to Penn Island High School for a couple of years, but he had a lot of health problems here, okay. so we ended up having him move down to his oldest sister's house okay. and live with them to finish school back in Florida. So you and your husband are here. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's retired, working in private industry. Yes. And so where does the writing career go from there? I just started doing another book every just year. I would sh I go to conferences, show my proposals, or I'd submit them and send them in, and I would get contracts. Then I had an agent, and uh, so the agent would we discuss which direction I should sure. go in. And, and there's some things I didn't bring in. I have a book for women on time management, a very small one that fits in your pocket okay. because busy women can't read a big book. Oh, <laughs> they need they don't have the little. time. They just <laughs> and, don't have the time. Right. So that editor, they rejected a proposal from me, and okay. I happened to see him at a conference. He says, I really wanted to do that. But this is why, you know, I wanted it, but the rest of the pub board thought we were going in a different direction and it wouldn't okay. fit the audience. Right. Finally, he says, but why don't you do something in the Battlefield and Blessing series? Okay. Which is what this Talk is about in. The and I said, yeah, but I said, Rick, you know, that's World War II and, and American Revolution, all these wars. I'm an Air Force mom. I'm a Coast Guard wife. Sure. What? And my dad was in World War II. What I know is the home front. Right. said, if I did a book, it would have to be on the home front of American wars. And okay. he says, oh, we've never done that. Send me a proposal. <laughs> and the advantage you had, you were a published <laughs> author at that point. So see, they know you're going to deliver. They know you're going to deliver. Yes, and I'd already written two books for that house. Okay. Right. So uh, that was in March, and I said, you know, I have... A deadline for this book, the end of June. I said, I can't even do a proposal until right, July. Right, right. I said, I'll see you in August. I'll bring it then. I knew I'd see him at another conference. So I brought the proposal in August. He says, this is great. This is the best proposal I've seen this year. He says, no, this is the best proposal I've seen. And now he had, let me back up just a bit. I had said to him, Rick, when would you want it done? He says, oh, the following Ju next June. I said, by the time I could start, I'd only have nine months. I have to get a co-author. I sure. can't do a big book that big. So he suggested someone, I thought of someone, called that person who also suggested the same person, Jocelyn Green. Okay. So, and she you ended up co being a Coast Guard wife. Oh, so you two <laughs> Coasties working together, right? So you're okay. All right. Yes. Talk about this book a little bit, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I designed this a little differently. It is a true daily story. It does okay. have a little scripture and prayer to go with each. Starting with the French and Indian War in 1755, it goes okay. through 2012 with the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And... What I did was, the first day would always start with original words, a big excerpt from a newspaper, journal, letter, something like that. Something that happened, whatever area For the beginning of the week, yes. Okay. And then you'd have uh, five days of stories, and then the last day would be a glimpse into society of that period. Okay. So in the War of 1812, one of those weeks ends with a glimpse into shipbuilding and what it was like okay. here in Baltimore, in fact. <laughs> and that worked out nice for the two authors, right? Because you're both the Coasties, right? Or yes, Wise yes, and she there? lives in Iowa, and I lived okay, here, and right. we divided up the book the way I wanted to divide sure. it, since it was Your my idea. idea. Your idea. <laughs> and she was ha she was very happy. She ended yeah. up doing the Civil War part, among other parts, and fell in love with these nurses and the research she did in the Civil War. And then her editor from Multnomah said, would you like to do fiction? So she proposed a four-book series of fiction on nurses from the Civil War, historic okay. fiction, Which and came did out that. of this book idea. Came okay. out of that book, yes. All right. And now, if I can, I want to go back just a little bit because you perked my interest. These are stories on the home front yes. during different periods where our country was at war. Yes. And going way back and... Mm -hmm. uh, which, and what, nurse? Give me the, I mean, who are we actually writing about? Our We're incidents? writing about the mothers, the okay. daughters, uh, some Who of the political home, wives. Okay. So you yeah. have president's wives in okay. there. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, you have, uh, there's a Jane, nobody really knows her last name. I do have her name in the book. French and Indian War. She gets kidnapped by the Indians for okay. two years. Her husband had been a gunsmith. Uh, they have a broken gun sitting around after two years that they've brought back from another raid right. and she knows how to fix things she fixes the gun okay. escapes because she has the gun gets her finds her way back home her husband she's been gone two years think he's probably remarried he did he oh. just remarried that week <laughs> no. so she chases the woman away and makes him get back the dowry <laughs> I mean, there's some great stories oh, in there of is. these feisty okay. women. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, for anyone who likes history, and especially kind of, like you said, the under... Uh, 
evaluated part of history. What's going home back in the old small towns and the cities where the people were all fighting? Oh, yes. I mean, even when I got to Vietnam, I wanted a story of a POW Tell bracelet. Tell me what you did in Vietnam. Yeah, what you did well, in Vietnam. Well, the, there's many stories in each. Yeah. There's you know at least a few weeks on every war. Some sure. Vietnam has four weeks. There is uh, the POW bracelets, which when I was a girl, that was a big thing had, to wear sure. those. The name but of a soldier yes, who they thought I was a POW. Right. right, and I wanted a really good story on that, and I'm praying about this, and finally, that's the day that I have to write it. So I get up and I say, okay, Lord, let me see what happens. I open up the AP Press, and there's this great story about a woman who has worn the bracelet for 45 years. They finally have mm. found the remains and identified it through DNA. She goes to the funeral. He was a Green Beret. The head of his team was a Green Beret that became a preacher that did the service that, oh, okay. when he died. Okay. Yeah. I get a hold of that preacher, <laughs> find out he is the only Green Beret they ever made a toy action figure of. You kidding me? Right. No, I'm not. Paul Longrier, Colonel really? Paul Longrier. And they actually made a toy <laughs> figure out of him. Yes, and he has such a great story, I have to use it because his wife at home is praying for him, always telling okay. him she's praying. He's an atheist. Okay. So you well, can see the Vietnam, relation. In Vietnam, Vietnam okay. he's always been an atheist, but right. he's in Vietnam. He says to his men, they're in a little hovel, he says, we have to get out, we're at the Battle of Long Vey. And he sends his men out ahead of him. They have to leave the one behind. And he said, don't come back for me. I'm going to go out, use the machine gun, and you all escape, get over the ridge. Okay. He gets out, uses the machine gun, his guys go over the ridge. He flips over backwards, lands on his back, and it's like he's dead. And he looks up and there's smoke coming out of the machine gun and different things but it's all suspended in air. Even the smoke stops and God speaks to him. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, and God says, Paul, do you want to live? He says, don't worry about me. Take care of my wife and the baby. They're innocent. She's a Christian. I don't believe in you. He yes. says this to God. <laughs> Three times God asked him that. He finally s says to God, yes, I want to live. And he's healed at that moment. And mm -hmm. he gets up and makes it over gets the bridge. And his photo makes the AP Press worldwide the one photo I really remember as a kid from Vietnam from time. Vietnam. With the bandage around his head, getting off the helicopter and holding on to somebody as he's limping. He, he, he basically uh, helped yes. all these guys get uh, away as well right. as himself. Okay. But of course I start that story because of the home front with the SAR call home for Valentine's Day a week after the battle and he says hey babe I got saved she goes I know I saw it in the paper he goes no babe I got saved she goes yeah it was even on TV he goes babe I got religion we're talking something <laughs> different here. okay yes. so this book is full of stories like on the home front yes. uh, now and I haven't done this with you how do we get that if someone's all of a sudden I mean all of a sudden people at home hey wow where do I get this thing how do we get it right well you can get it anywhere that they sell books okay. anywhere you okay. normally go you, if you want it Who autographed is this that's by AMG out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Okay, right, They're okay. over 100 years old, the publishing house. Right. Give them the name and one more time of the book. That book is Stories of Faith and Courage from the Home Front. Okay, and we can get that on Amazon? Yes, you can. You can get it. Go to my website. Why don't you share that? www. www.karenwhiting.com. Right. Www www okay, and they can actually order the book at that website. They can. Okay. And because I'm in the area, if they wanted to, they could meet me somewhere and get okay. a copy. Okay, we can do that. You want, now, <laughs> and they get in touch with you through the website? Yes, okay. yes. Okay, do the website one more time. www.karenwhiting.com. Okay. And there's a portal where they can email you through the website or yes. contact you. Right. So if they have questions not only in that book or other books, mm -hmm. but this one, uh, amazing. The, so go ahead, I'll be quiet. And Wherever of course it is stories of what happened in 1812 here on the oh, home yeah. front and how the home front people in Baltimore worked together with General Smith and his army to really prepare and fight. And without the civilians who helped, we may not have won is those right? battles, the Battle of Baltimore. That's what is considered by historians. So not only a g good piece of history, mm -hmm. but a good piece of history <laughs> of war on the home front. That sounds yes. And a lot of women. A lot of women. women. Oh, lots of yeah. women in yeah. there. And Which I don't think history, we talked off here, no, treats it very fairly at times. That's yeah. right. And yet, through that book, you can also see how women went from just being wives and moms to working because they needed okay. them to, f especially when factories Step started. Step up and take the place. And we became more of a manufacturer because of wartime. Okay. And all of that you can see as you read the book and, and see us move forward in history. Sounds very So where would you go after this now? Oh, but before we go awful lot of original reason. Where'd you go? Which most, I mean, <laughs> oh, I went to Connecticut, up in Pennsylvania, which okay. was the frontier, the edge of the frontier for the French and Indian War. I uh -huh. went to Yorktown. I went up to Massachusetts went to, to the John Adams the home. Sites, yeah. 
went online because many books now from colleges have been and journals have been uh, digitalized and you can yeah. access them. And I did a number of interviews for your more modern wars. Used my father's story from Pearl Har from World War II. He wasn't okay. in Pearl Harbor. He was on the home front, and it was his birthday. December seventh, when they when they yes, got hit. it was also the day his mother told him she was having another child. Oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting day. Right? I used to call it the day of the double bombing. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. I can. Okay. Right. Which is all right. So where did you go from here? Well, I started writing some more books for children. Okay. I had already written this craft book. Yeah, most of your books for children with a religious background or not? Yes, they do have that some component okay. in them. Perhaps less on Nature Girl, which is a book that came out talk last about nature, year. Yeah, talk about nature. Right. Well, Nature Girl, which is a guide to caring for God's creation, is really information about the environment, about it, uh, water quality and pure air, experiments, experimenting with the soil to see is your soil rich enough in worms? Okay. Is it acidic? Is it base? What do you do? And this is all in the book. That's Little in the practical book. Practical things. Okay. Right. And then there's also crafts on recycling. So CDs, which are one of the hardest things to recycle now is how you can cut a piece and make it into jewelry so okay. that's just cutting it apart and adding a uh, paper clip paper clip on okay. the back so you could put it Amen. on a necklace or okay. earrings and so the book is full of little goodies uh, the green yes. of the earth or how to right. keep the earth green and mm -hmm. some little practical things you can do right and, okay. and fun because girls like fun there's it starts with the spa day so they can learn how to make their own natural beauty oh, okay. products to care for their skin Go ahead, go ahead. All right, and it has fun quizzes like uh, How Green Are You, which really talks about terminology. Do you understand what recycling means? And okay. It has some fun answers like recycling means okay. to bicycle again, right. or does it really mean to use something again? Age group for that. <laughs> I, was with, you know, I talked about children's right. books. Yeah. The target age is 9 to 12, but girls older and younger are using it. I, there's okay. some teenagers down in the Keys who have really enjoyed this. So middle school, uh, early <laughs> couple high years school. of high school. Yes, which would be right. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, they get Nature Girl, we do what? Again, they can go wherever they buy their books okay. because if they don't have it in the store, they'll order them. Right. And they can go online to my website, KarenWhiting.com, and order from me if they want an autographed copy. Okay. So there's different ways different to get ways that. To get. Yeah, we're about to run out of time. I'm almost afraid to ask this question. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> now, make sure I get my numbers right. You have 20 published books, is that, am I right? 19 are published, okay, 19 one will release next January. Okay. I'm finishing one up now for young for moms of young girls, okay. which is Raising a Young Modern Day Princess. Oh, very good. <laughs> Doing the this rules one. have changed since I brought up kids. <laughs> I know my grandkids are a whole different league here. Well, this is really to have them have the inner qualities of virtues of a princess, and I'm writing it for Focus on the Family. Okay. And those are the books contracted right now. I'm uh, my agent's talking to a couple other people. It looks like I'll probably have another contract. With your crystal ball here, month. where do you think you're going? <laughs> yeah, what what sneak previews? What what do you? Is, is there an itch you want to get? Some topic you want to? Yes, on? I'm looking at some books for teenagers on communication. Okay. I'm looking at some books on bread and the Bible, which okay. is, uh, and then some fun. Uh, Christian living books that would be like uh, when life gives you breadcrumbs, bake casseroles. <laughs> And, and on top of this, we talked off the air. You're fortunate you have children, a uh, number of them in Florida, so you can yes. escape these uh, East Coast winners, <laughs> right. uh, which will be great. Uh, grandchildren yet? I have nine grandchildren. Nine grandkids. Yes. <laughs> Lord. So you've got five children, nine grandkids, 19 books done, one on the way. Right. Uh, and then people are amazed, of course, that two of my children are rocket scientists, two yes, of the boys. And they really are rocket scientists. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I keep teasing people that I'm probably going to do a book called How to Raise a Rocket Scientist <laughs> or Two. Because <laughs> most be people can't put the or two in no, there. <laughs> I'm very impressed. Okay. Well, look at Karen. Like I said, our time's about up. Thank you again. Now, let's just slow down again. If again, people have said, wow, we've got some great kids' books, we've got all types of neat stuff. Again, they can order them through the traditional Amazon, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But yes. to contact you and get to your website, how about share that again? Just go to KarenWhiting.com and contact me through the website. Go to the there's pages of books. It tells you a little description about each book and it has links to various places to order it from and links to find your local Christian bookstore or go to Barnes and Noble. They can order them too. I've done book signings at okay. various stores. 
and they can reach you th through a portal in your website if they have they questions. Can, and yes. you, I thought that was a very nice offer. If they bought a book, you we might be able to autograph it or whatever. Right. Okay. Yes, they can do that as well as uh, if they want me to come speak or anything on history or oh, crafts okay. or nature and you know keeping the bay clean. <laughs> well, what we're going to do with your permission, we're going to ask you back in about six months. Okay. I want to hear about the new book, <laughs> and I also want to hear about the nine grandkids and the children. Okay. Karen, thank you very much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having great. me, Fred. Okay, I appreciate it. I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching QAC TV, Papa's World, and we've had Karen Whiting, who, besides raising two rocket scientists, has five children, nine grandchildren, traveled around the world, 19 books published. I'm afraid to go on, okay? <laughs> thank you for watching us, and Karen, thank you again. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.